Welcome back to The Real Story. It's perhaps the race with the most competitive and crowded field of candidates. The job of Secretary of the State has primaries on both sides of the aisle. Last week, you saw the Democrats now meet the Republicans. State Representative Terry Wood and tech mogul and businessman Dominic Rapini, hey, thank you both so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank thanks, you, Matt. Matt, thanks for having us. All right, let's jump right in here. A lot to talk about. Uh, one of the biggest issues that's going to be facing whoever becomes the next Secretary of the State is to restore restore the trust in the election process. Uh, I'm not saying you, but your party has been the party of what Democrats have dubbed the big lie. So before we look ahead to the 2024 election, do you think President Biden won the election? And uh, how, how will you restore trust in the election process? Terry, start with you. Sure. The former president's own judicial department determined that there were no stolen elections. There were no fraud, there were no cases of fraud. It was his own, wasn't judicial department, it was his legal department that determined that. So I think we have to accept that finding. Um, more important, and as a legislator, I'm always looking to solve problems. What we have to do is inspire trust in our elections. I believe we absolutely need to have a required voter ID. Most people are unaware that we don't have a requirement to have a photo ID, yet 37 states have a requirement. Every state in Europe has a required photo ID. We must start with that. We also, I believe, in my administration, I will prohibit the mass mailing of ballot applications because that opens it up for malfeasance, shall we call it. Um, and I think that's another way. When you lose custody and control in the absentee ballot process is where the problems and the issues crop up. Mm -hmm. um, also clean up, may have much more collaboration in the local town clerks and town registrars on cleaning the voter rolls. Uh, Dominic, was President Biden duly elected and what do you do to restore trust in the process? So Joe Biden is a duly elected president of the United States. And as we go forward, we, we look to the many trust issues that we have right here in Connecticut. Uh, we have landlords in Bridgeport stealing the identities of their tenants. We have a uh, Democratic town chair, you know, in court right now for 28 counts of forgery of absentee ballots. And we have problems that I've been, since 2019, I've been trying to solve these problems and, and lead the, the effort to build election security. And one of the things I've learned is that politicians either don't want to solve these problems or don't know how to solve the problems, which is why I became an election day moderator, somebody who knows how to the elections run from the ground up. And I, and I find, I think that when I bring in my, my debt decades of experience in technology and business uh, that I've developed over in Silicon Valley and over in other parts of my life, I think those are going to be some, some skill sets that are desperately needed in Hartford. Okay. 39 states have early voting. Connecticut is not one of them, but voters will see it this year as a ballot question. Mm -hmm. So do you support early voting and do you support taking the definition of a traditional election day out of the state constitution? Mm -hmm. Dominic, start with you. So, so let's, rem let's remind ourselves that we have to solve problems for Connecticut. So what other 39 states do is not as important as what we have here. And we have a state that has you know, 169 unique towns with part-time registrars. So for us to consider early voting in Connecticut, we have to consider a few things. One, our legislators or our lawmakers that, uh, and, and the voters have to decide, are you willing to come up with an estimated 15 to $20 million for early voting here in Connecticut? What are you going to do for the 338 election officials that are part-time and that we may have to work 30 days in a row? And they, they have other jobs, You're other lives. It's an unfunded mandate. It is an unfunded mandate. And it's, I, think it's a, I think it's a mandate that may not be thought out, thought out very well. You know, Stephanie Thomas, the Democrat, wants to do a uh, a, a working group. She should have done that two years ago before she co-sponsored this memo, because then she'd find out that you know everywhere else in the United States, Connecticut has the highest voter turnout than all the states with early voting. So you know it's a it's a we're trying to solve a problem that may not be there. Terry, where do you stand on early voting? Um, great question. So early voting, we essentially have early voting right now with the R absentee ballot process. To expand it to early voting, which I have voted to support as a legislator. However, what I'm learning from many of town clerks is it is an unfunded mandate, and it opens up one more process they have to manage in order for it to be an election. Um, they have to shut the machines down for at least 48 hours before the election on Tuesday so that they can sync the lists. So that's one more thing for them to have to do. How many days out early would you do Well, I, I, three maximum. 
But more importantly, there's something patriotic. I, I will not, I don't think we should eliminate Election Day. There's something patriotic, there's something joyful when you see your friends, your colleagues, everyone in your community voting. There's something joyful and important about that. And I think what I would like to see is the privilege being protected more than it is right now and celebrating it, celebrating that we are a free country and have the right to vote. Uh, Terry, this one, we'll start with you. This past uh, elect legislative session, the General Assembly passed a bill to expand access to absentee ballots, but Connecticut still does not have what is known as no-fault absentee voting. Do you think we need it? We're, we're so close to, I don't know what else we would have that wouldn't make it no excuse, because basically we have it now. It's six reasons you can vote absentee, and it any excuse pretty much fits under that. And right now it's very secure if you go, especially with the primary coming up, what we're advising many people is to go early to the town hall because voting, you can vote now, and go directly to the town clerk and you fill out your app ballot application. It's a two-step process and you're done in three to four minutes. Secure, you sign the envelope, it's deposited in a safe system, the clerk marks you off, it's marked off the list, so the rolls, so you won't be counted on election, you can't vote on election day. It's it's clean, it's easy, and it's reliable, and it's secure. No fault, absentee voting? So, Around the world, 45 out of 47 Western democracies do not support mail-in voting of any type. And I'm not advocating that because I think we have a very good system enshrined in our Constitution. But we do not, here in Connecticut, do not have the infrastructure. Once again, we got to think about Connecticut. Our town clerks in 2020 were drinking through a fire hose for weeks, not able to do their normal job processing that, all the, the absentee ballots that were coming in. And then again, we saw, once again, all the problems that we had in our elections happen around absentee ballots. It's ballot harvesting in Britain. Board. It's 200 missing ballots in Enfield, 681 ballots that arrived late in in, um, uh, in, um, uh, in Stanford. You know, and that that litany of issues goes on and on. Now, I think as Secretary of State, I can go help solve a lot of these problems. I'd rather have mail-in voting than early voting if I had to pick between okay. the two. But we don't need both. Uh, Dominic, in one of your radio ads, uh, you say that you are in favor of common sense voter ID laws. Right. Uh, many Democrats say that these types of laws present obstacles that just disproportionately impact voting rights for people of color. Uh, so when you say that you support voter ID laws, what exactly do you mean? Well, what I mean is it, government ID is, is a, a building block of being part of our society, right? You need it to get a COVID shot, right? You need, a, you need to get on an airplane to, to get NyQuil, right, from the, from the pharmacy. So if, there is, if we think that there's a problem with uh, low-income people not being able to get uh, uh, voter ID, you know what, then let's find a way to get them free ID. Let's open up pop-up stores in, uh, in Walmart, you know, for the month of October. I would love to get behind that. I know retail. So I think we can come up with ways to get free ID to those people to make sure they can vote because they'll need that ID for other things to be functional in our society. And Terry, for you, on your website, you say that it's a priority for you to modernize election systems. But my question to you is, can we still maintain election security doing that? Because as you know, while Connecticut's paper ballot system is somewhat antiquated, it is decentralized, not connected to the internet, right. and harder to hack. So we definitely need to modernize, and by modernizing, right now our voting machines are 15 years old. They were meant to last five to seven years. It, it's like an old car. If you can buy the part, it's very expensive. It's hard to maintain. They don't maintain reliability the way they should, or they're not used. The ones that aren't reliable are not used. So we did, the new secretary will be choosing the new voting machines, and there are four to choose, and I will put a very strong group of technology experts together to choose wisely. It, uh, may I address the one question, though, about the... You can. I just have a minute. Okay. I want to get one more question okay. in, if you don't All mind. Right. All right. Real quick answer because we're running out of running out of time okay. here. One of the big problems with voting is a lot of people just don't do it, right? I mean, so how do you plan to tackle the issue of voter apathy? We see it in primaries, especially, uh, and a lot of the times with young people. So how do you get people involved in the electoral process, mm -hmm. Terry? Well, it goes back to the question I had wanted to ask that you had asked earlier about the Democrats have this ridiculous false narrative um, that there are so many barriers to voting, particularly against people of color. And I find that the bigotry of low expectations, quite frankly. And I find that insulting that they would say that about people who are fully capable of understanding what the system is. I would like to get into the urban districts and spend time educating, talking with those people, as I already have. It's important. Every 
everyone know they are capable of voting and eligible to vote. If you're a citizen, you can vote. There are no barriers. It's only barriers that politicians on the left put up to create this false narrative. Voter apathy, young people, Dominic? So in 2020, two of our biggest cities, New Haven and Hartford, with drop boxes with 35 precincts in each city, mail-in voting, the ballots mailed to everyone's home, less than 50% of those active, those uh, registered voters actually turned out to vote. And what were the reasons? They weren't inspired by good candidates, right? And two, they, um, they, they, they did not, they really just did not think it was going to make a difference, right? They felt that their ballots may not count because they're so, they've so accustomed to seeing fraud in those cities that they just felt, you know, why bother? So we have to restore trust in our elections and to make sure, and we have to have great candidates. Those are the two, two magic, magic uh, bullets that we need to put out there. I got to leave it there, but thank you both so yes. much for joining us. I wish we had more time. Oh man, we could do this all day. This is fun. <laughs> all right, and thank you for joining us on The Real Story. Remember that you can catch all of our interviews in full on our website, fox61.com, or just download our free Fox 61 News app. We'll see you back here next Sunday, 10 a.m. Have a great day.